All right, ladies and gentlemen, how you doing? It's Tuesday, March 24th, 2020. Hope you guys are staying safe, staying healthy out there amidst this pandemic bullshit. Talked about it in yesterday's video. Welcome to another exciting metallic episode of Music of Destruction right here on YouTube, bringing you the best in metal related content. So I figured I would continue on this new series that I started yesterday with my top 15 black metal albums. And if you want to check that out, just click the annotation up there in the corner of the screen right now and you'll be able to check out that video as well as other stuff I've posted. Make sure you catch up on everything. I don't want you guys to miss anything. I'm trying to stay very active on this channel, however. Rockstar Video Marketing is really taking off. I have client work I've been doing. I've been very busy, uh, especially with businesses locking down. We're getting a lot of opportunities to do work. Anyway, on to the video. So coming in at number 15, now this one might be a surprise to a lot of you, but for me, it's an album that I do find myself enjoying a lot, amidst sometimes being annoyed by the vocals, with Skinless, Trample the Week, Hurdle the Dead, which came out on Relapse Records, I believe this is 2006, from New York. Uh, and Metal Maniac says, one of the hardest working and most powerful live acts in the metal world. Pile drives the standard death metal formula. I mean, this is a really great band. The music itself is very, very old school, but the vocals, I kind of feel, are a little bit too slam, if you will. And I know it's not slam death metal, but the vocals kind of border on that slam influence, which I'm not a huge fan of. But nonetheless, made it to my top 15 with Skinless Trample the Week Hurdle of the Dead. You can find this pretty cheap on eBay. Pick it up if you'd like. You can also check out my full review of that album right up there in the corner of the screen. It should be popping up for you guys right now. So coming in at number 14, we have a German band, and this was given to me by Curran Craft Ritter Records, so thank you very much. Everlasting Carnage with Slaughterhouse Rock. Now this is a very different death metal band. Yes, they are death metal. They got that old school production, that old school approach. But what's really interesting about this album is the death and roll elements. And yes, that is a genre, death and roll. Now what that means is it's kind of a slower paced death metal with a lot of rock and roll groovy influenced riffing. Lyrically, this one's all about violence and the macabre. And it's got some fun elements to it as well. Um, with tracks like EC has entered the building, Rock and Growl imprint, track 49, Rise of Slaughter Joe, and I'm guessing that's supposed to be Slaughter Joe there. Uh, yeah, Rockstar EC has left the building with bonus Hello Clitty. So yeah, a really fun loving record, where, like I said, current crafter records. So, you know, just a great record overall, pretty good stuff to make number 14 on my list. Coming in at number 13, we have Incremate with Prospect of Death. Uh, released on Current Crafter Records as well, or distributed by Current Crafter Records. Uh, God, God Eater Records, Virtu, Virtuos Vibes, etc. So they have some collaboration, uh, a collaboration release between some labels. 2016's Prospect of Death. Now this is another band from Germany with that old school approach that I really, really like. This has a lot of passion, conviction, and emotion, but that really meaty old school death metal approach to it. Got a lot of good double bass work in it and some blasting, but not afraid to take a groove approach with this as well as most old school death metal did. A lot of it was balls to the wall as well. And there are those elements on this record as well. So yes, number 13, Incremate Prospect of Death. Make sure you pick that up if you enjoy old school death metal. Coming in at number 12, we have Necrophagia with The Divine Art of Torture. This album is something to me uh, is an album to me, sorry, that gets criminally underrated in the metal community. And I know Necrophagia are one of the founders of death metal. They're in that first wave. But this is an album that gets overlooked a lot, and I don't understand why. It is one of their best releases, in my humble opinion, and I fucking love it to death. Uh, it's got a lot of that groovy, old-school death metal approach with a lot of chunking brutality. And it is a very brutal album. Rest in peace, Killjoy. Necrophagia is the divine art of torture is amazing. And if you'd like to see that review of this album, I did it recently, click right up there in the corner of the screen right now. It should be popping up for you. Make sure you check that out. Number 12, Necrophagia, The Divine Art of Torture. Coming in at number 11, we have Cattle Decapitation, Karma, Bloody Karma. And this was at the time, 
in cattle decapitation's career when they began to move out of death grind and get more into progressive brutal death metal. This album to me speaks to me on so many levels as does cattle decapitation's music as a whole because of what the band is about and this one explores a lot of emotions uh, about the animal industry and misanthropy but, but, misanthropy, but also what Mother Nature has in store for us through her karma, and if the roles were reversed, animal supremacy, etc. Great fucking album from Cattle Decapitation. I haven't reviewed that yet, but I'm going to very soon, as well as buy the rest of their album. So yes, Karma Bloody Karma makes number 11 on this list. Coming in at number 10, we've got Morbid Angel with Domination. Now again, another album that is criminally overlooked in, in Morbid Angel's discography, I don't quite understand why that is, considering how fucking awesome this album is. A lot of people didn't like the departure from Blessed Are the Sick, Altars of Madness, and Covenant. But you gotta remember, Morbid Angel is not a band that wanted to stay one-dimensional, and a lot of bands decided to move in a bit of a different direction while still staying true to their death metal roots as a response to bands jumping on the death metal bandwagon, especially in that crucial second wave so you got to remember morbid angels domination is something different it's experimental it's emotional there's a lot of really great stuff on here and it's one of my favorite morbid angel albums i do have to get more morbid angel do not worry there's more coming to the channel uh i love this band to death so yes number 10 morbid angel domination coming in at number nine we have a band that plays kind of death, black, and thrash metal with Sadistic Executions. The Magus released on Osmos Productions back in 1984, 85, I believe it's 84. Uh, this is an essential album for uh, on so many levels. And so this album is just has that really occult approach. It's very fast, it's very frantic, but it's also got some deep ambient sections that I really, really appreciate. And the vocals are very awesome on this as well. Great guitar work, great drum work. Just an excellent album overall with Sadistic Executions, The Mages. I absolutely love it. Look for the full review of this coming very soon as well. <clears throat> coming in at number eight, Cattle Decapitation, The Anthropocene Extinction. 2015, August 7th, this was released on Metal Blade Records. Now some of you might be wondering, well are you going to get Death Atlas? The answer is yes, I'm going to get Monolith of Inhumanity as I said. Uh, this album is my favorite Cattle Decapitation release by far. They were exploring so many different concepts, ideas and emotions on this record. Ones of deep misanthropy, sorrow, despair. But I think this album was really coming from a standpoint of Mother Nature on so many levels. Absolutely brutal, violent record with some of Travis Ryan's vocal range reaching those harmonies that I talked about in the review and if you want to see that review for the Anthropocene Extinction just click the I right up there in the corner of the screen you'll be able to check that out number eight Cattle Decapitation the Anthropocene Extinction great album coming in at number seven we've got Crisian with Bloodshed the Brazilian death metalers themselves Bloodshed great album from Crisian Another band that gets overlooked in the death metal community I lo a lot, I feel, is Crisian. But a band that consists of all brothers, original, from Brazil, great album. Lots of great death metal old school going on here. And what I love about this album the most is the fact that it wasn't something they wanted to go super technical on or go crazy on. Or they didn't really care about it being varied. They just wanted to make a straight up brutal death metal classic and they did it with Bloodshed. Great fucking album from Crisian. Coming in at number six, we have a classic from Obituary with Cause of Death. Obituary is one of my favorite death metal bands and this album is my favorite. I know a lot of people would cite Slowly We Rot as one of their favorites. This is the one I really love. There's so much going on here in terms of benchmarking, innovation, amazing guitar riffing, great groove, great vocals, great bass. The production on this album, absolutely fucking amazing. If you want to check out my review of Cause of Death, click up there in the corner of the screen, that one right up there for you. Coming in at number five, Possessed 
Revelations of Oblivion. What can I say? One of the best death metal albums I've ever heard in my life. And from the godfathers of the fucking genre, you can expect absolute brutality on this record. Technicality, prowess, emotion, passion, conviction. An awesome fucking record. You can check out my full review of Revelations of Oblivion from Possessed. Boom. Right up there now in the corner of the screen. I, I mean, there's so many things I could say about this album. Just go watch the review when you're done this video. You will see why I this is in my top five. Great album. Coming in at number four, and I know you guys are gonna be like, well, what the hell? Why is this album in your black death metal or in your black metal list and your death metal list? Well, Morbid December Moon is making this list because there are a lot of death metal elements on that album as well. It's not just black metal. And this album was so overlooked in the death metal community and the black metal community that I feel it merits being in both of these lists. And I'm probably even going to put it in my top 15 thrash metal as well because this is an album <clears throat> that covers three different genres and mixes them so well. And for a four track EP, it does it in spades. Check out my review of Morbid's December Moon. Boom, right up there in the corner of the screen as well. You will not regret it. And if you don't have this, pick it up. It's amazing. Coming in at number three, we have another album that branches three different genres with black, deck and black death and thrash metal. However, there's more death metal influence on here than there is black metal. Blasphemy, Fallen Angel of Doom. I can see myself getting crucified in the comment section if I did not include this fucking album. Blasphemy is from Vancouver, British Columbia. One of my favorite acts in the death metal scene at the time I have to get their next record as well. I know they did a few and then they got arrested and stuff like that. Amazing fucking band. If you haven't heard Fallen Angel of Doom, you need to get it. Check out my full in-depth review of Blasphemy's Fallen Angel of Doom right up there in the corner of the screen. You can check that out. Coming in at number two on this list, we've got Autopsy. Severed fucking survival, ladies and gentlemen. What kind of death metal fan would I be if I didn't include this in the list? I mean, it's autopsy, it's severed survival. It's classic, it's brutal, it's passionate, it's convicted. The bass, what more do I need to say? That bass production, amazing, incredible album, benchmarking in so many fucking ways. Check out my full in-depth review of Autopsy, Severed Survival, right up there right now for you, should be popping up. Great album, number two, Autopsy, Severed Survival. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, coming in at number one. I think you know what this is going to be if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, even when I had my old channel, you'll know exactly what number one is. That's right, Possessed Seven Churches. The album that started it all for fucking death metal. Brutal, convicted, passionate, emotional, raw, and untouchable. To this day, this album is untouchable. Pioneered the fucking genre, Jeff Becerra himself and company on this album. Immaculate for a bunch of 16, 17, and 18 year olds. I cannot believe how great this album is. 35 years later, it still holds up as my favorite death metal album of all fucking time. Check out my full in-depth review of it right up there in the corner of the screen. And guys, if you're new, please hit the subscribe button, turn on the bell for notifications so you don't miss anything. Join the Facebook group, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Music of Destruction. Find me on social media, Twitter and Instagram at Music of Destruction. Get access to patron-only content like podcasts, that I do uh, the Seed Podcast and other perks by becoming a supporting member of the channel. You can go to patreon.com forward slash music of destruction. My newest podcast, the Seed episode number 19, The History of Motorhead, part one is coming up this weekend. I have a lot of work right now with clients. I'm going to get to that podcast for you fine patrons. Thank you so much for supporting. I appreciate it. Time for some shout outs here on the channel. We got Metal Bands Chronicles, King of Swords, Acid Metal, Backwards Metal, Farley's Nerd Cave, and of course, Shadows of Death Records, my good friend Gail helping me out. Thank you, Gail. Go to shadowsofdeathrecords.com forward slash list hyphen two hyphen music. Check out all of his bands. His recent signing with Sign of Luna, or Sight of Luna, is, they're a great band. Sagrado, great band. Looking forward to bringing that stuff to the channel for you guys. Heavy Metal Networks, Anthony, Chris, and Mop, check them out as well. Diabolic Intent, great band. Can't wait to do some stuff with them. It's going to be awesome. 
thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this top 15 video. We will see you in the next video. Have yourselves a great night and stay safe out there, guys. Bye-bye for now.